Hi everyone, it's Stephanie back with another spinning tutorial. And today what I'm going to do is talk about plying a thick and thin yarn. So this is the result of the thick and thin yarn that I spun on a prior video. Maybe it was two or three videos ago. So I finished that spin and here it is. See, I love the colors, nice and soft and muted. Um, there's a lot of thin here. This was the end, so remember when I'm spinning a thick and thin or really any type of textured yarn, I like to begin and end with a section of just normal spinning. So if I'm casting on a project, then I don't, I can just cast on normally without worrying about the texture or whatever else I'm adding. So what I'm going to do is ply this thick and thin yarn with this. This is um, th this is just a natural colored alpaca. It's thin. It is slightly fuzzy. It has a little bit of a halo to it, but it won't compete with this yarn. I've got my bobbin set up here on my Lazy Kate with my hand spun, and then over here, I have the plying yarn. So I'm going to set that down to my right, and you do not have to set your Lazy Kate if you have one down to your right, it's just what I do, okay? And I'm going to pull up a, pull up the end of the plying yarn and the end of the hand spun yarn. I'm going to put them together, okay? like this, and I'm going to take my leader, which is already attached to my bobbin, I'm going to open up the leader, insert both yarns through the leader, and then fold it back on itself, so that when I start to spin, it's going to ply itself and hold, start holding together. So, as always, my disclaimer is I spin clockwise, which is to the right, so I am going to ply in the opposite direction, which is to my left. Now, if you spin to your left, you will ply to your right. Just remember that you're always going to be plying in the opposite direction, because if you plied your yarn in the same direction that you spun your yarn, you would be adding way too much twist, and you'd end up with all of these little corkscrewed spots all over your yarn, and you really don't want that. So I'm going to start spinning. Whoops, look at that. I started clockwise, and then I caught myself. I'm on my Echo, again, because the Echo, and really most of the Spinolution wheels are just great for art yarns. As I mentioned before, they have these nice pegs that nothing gets caught on. They have a hook. You can get this with an orifice also, and the orifice opening is pretty big, but I wanted the hook just, just because then I can fit anything on here. And the bobbin is much, much bigger, so it can accommodate much more yarn. So I'm going to just start spinning and do this regularly right now. The way that I'm, oh, there go the dogs. The way that I'm holding the yarn is in a little bit of a V, like this. Okay, this is my hand spun, this is my plying yarn. And right now, I'm just holding it in a V and letting it ply the way I normally would for a traditional yarn. And it's there's nothing different about this right now. So I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can hold the yarn that will change up the ply, and you'll be able to better see that in the thicker sections. But if I want a just plain traditional ply in the beginning here so that I can cast on my project, I would just hold the yarn in a V. And you can hold it out like this in a wide V, and that's gonna be working closer to the orifice and your ply is going to be a little tighter, or I can bring it up here, hold it together, even in one hand, and it's going to be a little bit looser of a ply. Okay. I'm going to just do somewhere in, the bet in between right now, being careful not to let my hand spun unwind too much, 
So I'm gonna go kind of quickly here, making sure that it gets on the wheel quickly. And then once we get to the thicker sections, I will show you that when you are doing a ply like this with thick and thin yarn, or really any type of textured art yarn, the main thing that you wanna watch is how you are holding your plying thread or your plying yarn. That's what makes the big difference in plying techniques. It's just the way you are holding it. Just as I showed you, if you have a wider V, you're going to have a tighter ply, and if you have a narrower V, v you're going to have a looser ply. The same thing is going to happen if you, um, for example, if you toss the yarn over, or if you hold the plying thread straight and you hold your um, hand spun out to the right, or vice versa, you can change that too. It, they all have a different effect. And I'm gonna try and get close enough up so that you can see that. But again, it's going to be much more, much more obvious on um, the thick areas of the yarn. You can also get a different effect when plying if you change the amount of tension. For example, if I put more tension on the, um, the commercial yarn and less tension on the hand spun yarn, that's going to give me one effect. And if I would reverse it and do the opposite, more tension on the hand spun and less tension on the, um, the commercially prepared, it's gonna give me a totally different effect. Here are the dogs in the background again. Okay, so we're coming to the first thick section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this straight. Okay, so I have plied like this in a V for the beginning portion. And I did that on purpose because I want to have pretty much a standard yarn before I get to the textured portion. And I'm gonna see if I can move this so that you can really get a look at the yarn. I don't know if you can see the difference in the color. And it's just a nice subtle yarn that we've got going on here. Make sure I get that readjusted. Okay, so focus a little more on my hands so that you can see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this, my hand spun, straight out from the orifice to my belly button. It's like a straight line. Then I'm going to take my commercially prepared yarn and I'm going to hold that at a 90 degree angle. So out like this. And then we will start start going and I'm gonna kind of I've got a lot more tension on my um, my hand spun than I do on my commercially spun or commercially prepared and that's what I am wanting right now because what you get I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in this light. I am really working on my lighting here to get some better lighting. I don't know if you can see through here where we've got a slight texture going on. And that will become more pronounced as I spin. But what happens when you hold your plying yarn out at a 90 degree angle instead of the what it does basically is your normal ply is going to be sort of this long, loopy, stretched out. Um, I can't ever remember if it's a Z or S. I think it's a Z with the plying. But anyway, you're going to have a longer space in the middle. What this, between the ends of the Z and, or the S, what this does when you hold your yarn to the left is it compresses that amount of space. and it goes into the thick spots in the yarn and it kind of 
allows little bits in between the plied yarn to plump up. So I'm coming up, I can feel it. See in my hand, I've got this thick, thick space right here, this thick piece. So here I go again, I'm letting the plying yarn pull out this way. So here we are at the thick spot and we are just going to let this wrap around. And there we go. We've got another nice, let me pull this out for you. Now we've got another nice thick space here. Now I went a little thicker after I had been spinning for a bit. So that's one way that you can, you can ply a thick and thin yarn. The other way I wanna show you which is probably my favorite, is to the tension on the commercial yarn. Here we are to another thick spot and I'm gonna show you. Now I'm gonna just switch. I'm going to hold the commercially prepared or plying yarn straight and I'm going to take the homespun and, or hand spun and hold it at a 90 degree angle. And I think you'll be able to see this a little bit better. And so the twist just sort of catches and that is what I really love. The twist in the plied yarn or in the plying yarn sort of grabs onto your hand spun and makes it twist in this really beautiful almost a uh, shell looking way. So if we do it the way we did it at first where we hold the hand spun vertically straight from the orifice to our belly button, then we're really um, more melding the two, the plying and the hand spun together. If we do it the opposite way, hold the plied yarn, the plying yarn straight like this, and then the hand spun, let it kind of just roll onto it like this, you're creating more texture. Let's do that again we're coming up to another thick space here and i am once again going to hold my plying yarn straight and i'm just going to let that plying yarn i'm not really doing anything with this hand i'm not putting tension on it i'm just guiding the hand spun yarn onto the plied yarn letting the plied yarn grab it and roll it on here, okay? So, let me unspin this and show you up close what we've got. And then I'm gonna show you something else. So we've got this nice textured yarn going on. Okay. So, let me show you something else that we can do. Again, we're going to hold the plying yarn straight with tension. We're gonna just sort of toss or loop this hand spun onto it. And then we're gonna stop spinning and we're gonna squish it forward, okay? And we'll spin a little bit more here so that you can see the difference. Okay. And this is yet another texture that you can create. Let me see if you can see that. You see this section here? All I did was, was hold the plying yarn up straight with tension and just push the yarn down together. So you're eliminating all of the space in between the hand spun and you are just making these coils, really tight coiled spots. Here we go. On the yarn. Let's see if you can see that. See? So that's something else you can do. And it it all everything we're doing here, we're only changing the hand position for each yarn, okay? Um, and it's up to you which one you want to do. 
there's not one technique that is better than an, than the other. It's just however you want the end product to look. So before we sign off here, before I sign off, I want to show you something else that I that I do that I think helps with the stability of the yarn so much. Okay, so I'm going to continue holding the plied yarn with tension straight toward my my belly. I'm gonna put feed on some of this spun yarn until I get to the beginning of a thick section. And I'm gonna switch, okay? So now I've got the tension with the hand spun and I'm holding it straight and the commercially prepared yarn that I am again untangling here. Should have set my Lazy Kate up differently. What I'm going to do is as I spin, I'm gonna just sort of toss this yarn, the plying yarn, I'm going to just kind of toss it over. So what that does is it accumulates a little section, I'm trying to hold it out so that you can see it, of knotted or textured yarn. And then I'm going to switch back and do what I did before with the plying yarn held straight, coming to the end of a thick section, okay? And I'm gonna switch again, hold the tension on the hand spun, and just let a little bit of plying yarn build up, and it creates this kind of like a bobble. Let's see. I probably should have used a different color that would stand out more, but if you can see this, and this is all the plied yarn, I just sort of tossed it over top of the hand spun and I do that on either end of the larger thicker areas and I feel like it kind of bookends the coils and provides a lot of nice stability and structure for the yarn because remember some of these textured yarns that we are creating are not as stable Oops, I was going the wrong way there. They're not as stable or as strong as our traditionally spun yarns. And so we wanna make up for that. So sometimes, and there what I did, I don't know if you caught it, but you see how this is um, more textured, more lumpier, I guess. As I was tossing on the hand spun, as I was letting it wind on, I just kind of went back and forth like this. You see, and it's the ply, the plying, the twist in the plying yarn is catching it and it's sort of making it squiggle back and forth like that. So these are all different ways that you can manipulate the texture in your end product simply by changing your hand position. And that's really the secret to plying. You can easily do a traditional ply and it will turn out beautifully, but by just tweaking your hand position just a little bit, you can get something completely different. And what I would suggest is to spin a thick and thin yarn and maybe use some fiber that you're not that fond of, that you don't care what happens to it and then just see what happens. Play with it a little bit. Like what I'm doing right now, I'm tossing the plying yarn over the homespun, hand spun, and I'm making this nice textured bobble here. And I'm just going back and forth with my hand here. I'm kind of tossing it and back and forth. And it'll make just a beautifully textured area right there. So now I'm gonna switch again, and I'm gonna go back to letting my thick piece just wrap at a 90 degree angle over my plying piece. And 
at the end here. You see now we're thinner again. So what I'm gonna do is just that back and forth with my hand spun right here at the end of this thick section and it creates another textured bobble. So just play around with it. You cannot mess this up. See, there's the, the textured spot from the hand spun being tossed over. Here is the thick area and we can even squish that together like this and create nice little coils. And here is what it looks like when I just tossed the, get it closer to, when I just tossed the plying yarn over top of the hand spun yarn. So you can see just in this space, I've done three or four different techniques just by switching my hand position. And that's really all there is to applying a textured yarn, especially. You just are going to play with your hand position and you are going to decide what you like. You're gonna figure out what you think looks best and you're just gonna go with that. So I hope this was helpful. If you try out this spinning technique, drop me a line below. Include pictures. You, know, you guys know I like to, I'd love to see what you all are working on show me what you're doing and maybe I'll come back and do another plying video with a thick and thin yarn and I'll use two completely different textures and that way it might be easier for you to see or I'm sorry not two completely different textures two completely different colors and that way it might be a little bit easier for you to see um, this was just a different thing I just now did. I let the hand spun wind really close and then I looped it back on itself and then added a little bit of the thin in, in between. So it's really just up to you. Just manipulate your hand positions, manipulate the plying yarn versus the hand spun yarn and see what you come up with. You might come up with something new that you could share with all of us and teach us a thing or two. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe. I appreciate all of those, those of you who do like and subscribe and especially those of you who comment. It makes my day when I, when I see that I've got a comment from one of you all. So until next time, this is Stephanie Nipper. Happy spinning.